continue to pray for his sister Lucy, amen, and, and Fidel, amen, she, is a, she couldn't come tonight because she, to, she had to care for him, but I know that was hard on her. She loves to be in everything we do, especially our services, because she opens up and, and uh, uh, just pray for her. She needs strength right now, amen? amen. But uh, tonight, why don't you turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, uh, your reasonable service. He says, verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and, ple and perfect will of God. Amen? Father, we thank you tonight for your word. And Father, if we've ever needed your word, it's now, Lord. Father, we're living in some demonic times, Lord. And your word even said that in the last days, even the, if, if it were possible, that even the elect would be deceived. Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, Father, we plead the blood over our minds and over our hearts tonight as a, as a people, as a body, as a church as your beloved tonight. Father, help us tonight, we pray. Help us, Father, Lord God, in our minds. Help us in our lives to live an honorable life unto you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. amen. Wow, this is a heavy-duty scripture right here. Amen. amen. To, 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 he says, that I beseech you, brethren, amen, and basically what he's saying is, I'm begging you, bro. That's what he's saying. I'm begging you, bro. Sister, I'm begging you by the mercies of God. Understanding all the mercy that God has given you to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable under God. He says it's your reasonable act of worship. Amen. And so, you know, I mean, here, you know, I mean, many, many times in our lives, we don't, we don't understand that, you know, we think serving the Lord is coming to church. Yeah. My wife was mentioning a guy that I was telling about the church is like a chow hall. And all we're here for is to eat tonight. Yeah. All you're here tonight is to hear the word so you can run out there and go tell the world about God. Yeah. Yeah. That's all this is about here. Yeah. And I said, isn't it, isn't it a trip how we've glorified church? In the being, your salvation. You look at you look at people that go to church, and that's like their salvation. They can live like the devil outside them doors, but once they come to church, it's like I'm saved. You with me? And they look to church for so many things, and 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 they look to you know what I mean that you know the, the 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 church, whether it's huge or a mega church or beautiful or whatever it is, they look to that temple as being their salvation. Right. And so if they attend regularly every Sunday like a good Christian boy or girl should, you know what I mean? They, they feel good about themselves, justified if you would, that, that you know what I mean, they, that they're going to the temple of God, they're going to church. And, and uh, so, but Monday through Saturday is a different story because they're not there and the pastor's not there watching you. Yeah. You with me? Right. And nobody's there watching, you know what I mean, your your private life, your conversations, who you're texting, who you're on Facebook with. You with me? Amen. Are you here tonight? Amen. And so we think because we're not at the church or involved with the church, when we're out there, it's kind of our life. And he was saying, you know what, listen, if you're reading through the through the through the through the Bible, you'll find when, when God called Abraham, or God called Moses, God brought, a, he, he called Moses to build a tabernacle for him. 
which is basically a tent, but they considered it the, the, the temple of the Lord. It was something, in, and the Bible says that we're, our bodies are like tents. Right? They're, 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 they're weak and they're, they're going to die. You ever thought about this? You're going to die. You, you were born to die. Right now, you're dying in your pew. It didn't sound right, huh? But right now, in your, in, your, in your chair right now, you are dying. You're decaying. You're, you're, you with me? This is a temple. Then one day you're going to fold it up. God's going to fold it up and put it in a casket and then put it in the ground and it's done with. God always looked to build a temple for his people. Uh, somewhere where he can dwell in fellowship with you. You with me? What is a tent for? A tent is where you live. A tent is temporary. You know what I mean? Somewhere you live temporarily. You sleep in the tent, right? Yeah. You change in your tent. You, you know what I mean? All them private things you do in your tent. You with me? And that's, that's the, but, but in a few days it's going to be folded up real nice and neat and swept out. And then put back in the thing and stick in the, in the shed for another year. You with me? Right. And your body right now, this temple that you're living in, God, He remember He said in 1 Corinthians, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Amen. And that the Spirit of God lives in you? He said, how are you going to be putting your body, your temple, that, that, that place where God dwells and has communion with you, how are you going to go lay with somebody that's not your spouse? Right. Right, amen. You with me? I'm not talking on that tonight. I'm just, I'm just telling you. You with me? In, in, in Solomon's time, in David's time, David's desire was to build a temple for God. God always desired to dwell in the temple. But God's re real focus was Calvary. God's real focus was one day when he's able to dwell, not in a church, but in the hearts of men and women. You with me? And he, and, and he, he tells us here in, in Romans 12, 1, to, he said, I beg you, brother, if you haven't heard anything, hear this. I beseech you, I beg you, present, he said, uh, uh, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Why? Because you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right, and the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. You with me? Amen. So if you're really a Christian, then then this is this is like just a chow hall. This is a building of of wood and 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 mortar and 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 and, and uh, you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 sheetrock and 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 wood. You know what I mean? This is just a place where we've come to gather, where the Lord has blessed us to purchase, where we come together and and, and common union to worship God and to hear the Word of God. But once you walk out this building, you take the Holy Spirit with you. you. With me? And you go out there into your lives and whatever you put in front of your eyes, whatever you put in your ears, and that includes your music too. Listen to me good. You can't honor God. We're talking about backing that thing up and dropping it like it's hot. And, 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 the, and, the, and the words are, are, I mean, I don't know if some of you listen to some of this new music that's out. But, but sometimes my wife or the youth, she'll get the print out of the words. And I'm talking, they're, they're talking stuff that will make the, some heathens blush. You with me? I mean, they're, they're graphic, they're, they're por pornographic in their words yeah. and they just put some beats to it and our kids are walking around jamming like that uh, and maybe even some of you yeah. you put it on 89.5 the rev yeah. and you're listening to a bunch of stuff that's terror it's i mean would you put the holy spirit those earphones on no. you know what i mean and and yet you know what i mean you do that every time Every time you listen to that, because because you know what I mean, you're putting that junk in your in your spirit, in your in your heart, and the Holy Spirit's right there, like turn it off, man. I don't want to hear that. The Bible says that there's a war inside of of humans, 
with with the Holy Spirit and with your, with uh, your spirit. You know what I mean? That it, it is always at war because your spirit is your flesh. You're, you just want to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. With me? But the Holy Spirit wants you to do what God wants you to do. Right. And you're in constant turmoil in your heart. We were talking about that the other night in men. It's a battle raging on the inside of you. And somebody asked a guy one time, well, you know, who had two pit bulls who were mean fighters and killers. You know what I mean? The same size, same look. They both had killed many, many other dogs in fights and stuff. And, 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 and they asked the owner, well, have you ever fought them? And he said, well, no. He goes, well, which one do you think will win? Speaking of the spirit and the soul, you know what I mean? He says, well, whatever one I feed the most. Yeah. Who's going to win in your life tonight? Okay, whatever one you feed the most. Think about it. How, how, how much time do you give in yourself in prayer? How much time do you pray? Don't answer that out loud. But how much time do you spend in the Word of God, reading and studying for yourself? You with me? Something that's, you know what I mean? I, I praise God for, we got a bunch of them back there too, the daily breads. You guys are welcome to take one of those and, and, and read them daily. Every morning, read that thing with your cup of coffee or, or your Mountain Dew and donut, whatever it is. But read that Word of God. Get it on the inside of you. You with me? But, but, but how, how much time do you give? Or how long does that take some of you to read a daily bread? Brother Manny, how long does it take you to read it? Just that real quick. Maybe three minutes? You know what I mean? So three minutes of your life, if, you, if that's all you do, just one day, you know, and you give two hours to TV, how much time do you give? Have you noticed yourself? I was telling the guys the other day, just messing around, but I was saying, look at, look at us. We're addicted, we're addicted, not to crack or heroin or cocaine or drugs or alcohol, but to our telephones. How much time do you spend on that phone? Time yourself and look at it and see how much time a day you're on that phone. Some of us are addicted to our telephones. You don't even know it. How many of you see people walking around like that? They're texting, not even watching where they're going, bumping into stuff or, or, or you know what I mean? Or driving. How many of you drive and text? You know that's illegal to do that? You know you can kill somebody doing that? That's worse than dr dr drinking and driving. You with me? Because you're not paying attention and you're in your right mind. What takes you just a few seconds here to stand will, will kill somebody. You with me? And we're, we're, how much time do you spend on that thing or, 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 or given to Facebook? How much time do you Facebook every day? How, how long are you on there? An hour? Eight hours? Could you imagine if you focused your time on praying and reading your Bible for eight hours? You with me? Yeah. Amen. Right. Could you imagine if you prayed an hour a day? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. And you read your Bible an hour a day? Every day? And then you got up and you went out walking you went out, if you're not working or whatever, and you, you go out and you just walk and, and, and ask God, God, lead me to the right person. Have a handful of flyers. You with me? Could you imagine if you gave your time to that? Versus sitting there caught, locked up in your house on Facebook or, or Twittering or, or whatever they call that? You with me? All that stuff or, or television? You with me? Or surfing the, the web, yeah. even if it is Craigslist or whatever, you know what I mean, on there every day for an hour or two, looking and searching and all this stuff. Could you imagine if you gave that time to the Lord and said, you know what, gee, the pastor was saying, I ah, to listen. You with me? Amen. Amen. Could you imagine how much... Uh, you know, if you if you spend time in not only studying the word but reading and and and, and books uh, of of great men and women of God who who maybe give you I mean because the ladies are doing a new book now this is a little uh, advertisement but but the ladies on Wednesday nights are doing a book called Beauty for Ashes yeah. by Joyce Myers for those of you ladies that aren't going to the women's 
It's a powerful book. My wife said we had an awesome time in the Word uh, Wednesday night. You know what I mean? But could you imagine instead of staying home watching TV or doing whatever it is you did, go, to actually go to women's for that two hours or whatever and, and put that into your spirit? Some of you got, I, I, you know what I mean? I don't really understand what the book's about, but, but I think it's dealing with your past. Yeah. Right? Yeah, emotional, bondage. emotional bondage, stuff that had happened in your past. And stuff. Could you imagine? How many of you say tonight, man, I, I could use some of that kind of help? Yeah. We got so much emotional baggage and all this yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? We need stuff like that. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. But, but if, you, if you would start, you know, and people don't understand, man, all you do is church, church, church. Do you realize how messed up you were? Yeah. <laughs> if you just take a moment and just think and just say, man, look at who I was. And, and, and now, you know what I mean, that, you know, even if it is two hours at women's or whatever, you're, you're putting the word of God. You used to be in the club, how long? <laughs> used to be from house party to house party, from, from this guy's house to that guy's house, and all this, and how much hours you spent satisfying and gratifying your flesh. You with me? And, and, and now, you know what I mean, spending this time at, at, at church and in the Word of God and hearing your pastor preach a message or hearing Pastor Susan on Wednesday nights or, or whatever it is, you know what I mean, but you're hearing the Word and, and it's changing you. I don't know if you understand it, but right now, you're being changed. I told you a minute ago, yeah. you're dying right there in your pew. Yeah. The Bible says that the outward man perishes, but the inward man's being renewed day by day. So even though you're dying, your inward man right now is just like, Ooh. Huh? <laughs> huh? You're being, you're strengthened right now. Yeah. You're being renewed. You know what I mean. You're, you're hearing the word of God, and you're hearing, you're, you know what I mean. And, and you're, you're gonna go away from this. And every time, whatsoever a man or a woman sows, that shall they also reap. And that has to do with the good too. Yeah. It's not just a bad thing, because we think of bad, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, ooh, you know. <laughs> but do you ever think of good? That whatever you're reaping, whatever you're sowing right now, you're hearing the word, you're listening to it, it's changing you. Even if it takes you 10 years to change, it's changing you. Come on now. Maybe some of you are discouraged today and you say, man, I don't, I'm not changing fast enough. According to whose schedule? To God, and one day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day to Him. So some of you haven't even been saved couple seconds to God. One second, a twinkling of an eye, you've been saved. And we're like, see, I ain't changed. I feel like a dirty dirt bag. And, and man, you know what I mean? I might as well go drink. And sometimes we even put those um, conditions on each other. You're not changing fast enough. You with me? And, 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 and some are changing too fast. I don't think you can change too fast. Amen? But, but needless to say, we need to change. God has put His Holy Spirit inside of you. And He said, grieve not the Spirit of God. Grieve, not, grieve ye not the Holy Spirit of God. That means sadden. Have you ever got sad, bad news made you sad? Yeah. Maybe they call and say, hey man, listen, your, your kid is just got suspended, or hey, this person you love has just been in an accident. What happens? You're sad, your heart gets sad. You know what I mean? And that's the way the Holy Spirit feels every time we live for the flesh. You with me? He's inside of you like cringing every time you cuss. You with me? Going la 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 la. <laughs> huh? I don't want to hear that trash. You with me? We were just talking about it. What did you say, Brother Ephesians 4.29? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. Yeah. Don't let nothing come out of your mouth. You wouldn't want Jesus to hear. Yeah. Yet how many of us, you know what I mean? We still, that little tongue of yours, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I'm not at church. You with me? Yeah. I'm at home. 
Huh? Okay. So this way, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if the Broncos get a, lose a, a fumble and they lose the game, and there you are cussing all mad because of a dumb football game? Come on now. Or whatever it is. Well, you wouldn't do that at church, though. And if you would, I'd rebuke you in your face. You with me? So why would you do it at home? Don't you know you're the temple of the Spirit of God? Don't you know that He's supposed to live inside of your heart? I asked you the other day, how many of you claim to be Christians? And uh, most of you lifted your hands. Some of you didn't. You with me? But if you did, the, the Bible says the Spirit of God came to live in with, live inside of you. You with me? And He's talking to us here. He said, I'm be, I beg you, bro, by the mercies of God, by all the mercy that God has ever done for you. Because hasn't he done great things for you? Yeah. Some of you shouldn't even be alive tonight. Yeah. You should have died in that accident. You should have died in that overdose. You, you with me? Yeah. Maybe some of you should have died at birth. Yeah. And God allowed you to live. And because of his great mercy, you're here today. And we have a tendency to, our attention spans worse than the Royal Rangers. We for, you know, and it's not for, you know, I mean, what we're doing, because, man, uh, some of you are the greatest workers in the world. You do so great for your boss, man. You do so great for everybody else, but when it comes to the Lord, you don't see a need. Our attention span is small. We can't, what was I doing? I, I, you know what I mean? We, we have these big old plans, because God speaks to you in prayer. Yeah. And how long does that last? You with me? Amen. You with me? Amen. I want you to do this for me, son. And it lasted as by the time you got out the front door of the church, huh? What was it? You with me? Amen. You forgot. You can't stay focused on pastor. You're looking at that sign or that tree or the picture or your phone or your watch or, or whatever it is that you're reading that. You're looking at the your carpet. You're finding something because you can't you can't even focus for, for, for a few minutes. Yeah. Right. You with me? And we've forgotten what God has done for us. I try and remind you. I try and remind you every service. Hey man, you ought to, you thank God you're in church tonight. Some of you literally ought to be in prison. Yeah. Right. We've had people in our church that should have been in prison for, for, for a lot of stuff. You with me? Amen. You ever heard of anybody ever, you know, I mean, you see some of these men that are considered sex offenders, and, and, and what happens is they just had an affair or, or fondled or, or had sex with a woman who was under 18. Let's say she's 17. But in the state's eyes, they're considered a sex offender. You with me? Amen. But, 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 I mean, there's been people in our church who have had affairs with, with teenagers should have been in prison tonight yeah. and, and God's merciful Amen. some of you if you would have gotten caught yeah. Yeah. one of our cousins one time there uh, uh, somebody was telling me they went to a party and the cousin was over there trying to trying to, to, to be with a 13 year old and this person had to smack him upside the head and tell him, what are you doing bro that's jailbait. We don't think of stuff like that because we're walking in the flesh. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And, you, and you've forgotten all those times that God got you out of your trouble. Yeah. You with me? How God brought you out and how His great mercy forgave you. Ain't that cool? That You know what I mean? We were talking about it earlier, about sin and doing stuff like that. And you know what? I really don't believe it, Brother Manny. I don't believe that. That God's going to sit there, bro, and he's going to be with every little thing. Be like, you know, what you did, you know what I mean? Punish him. I really don't think that. Especially if you repented of your sin. Because as far as God's concerned in 1 John 1, 9, he said, if, on the condition that you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from some unrighteousness. From what? Oh, all unrighteousness? <laughs> Why? Because we repented? Yes. So he's going to forgive our sins and cleanse us, help cleanse us of all the ugly stuff we do. 
How many know he's working on you tonight? That's the mercy of God. We read scriptures like his mercy endures forever. Let all Israel say his mercy endures forever. Let the church of God say his mercy endures forever. Let you with me? He, he, he goes, man, he, you know, because his mercy is, is, is unending. It's new every morning. And we, know, we understand that. We, we, we ain't got a quick attention span there. You know when you sin that he's going to forgive you. You with me? But you can't just forgive. You can't just remember not to sin. <laughs> You remember that he'll forgive you, but you don't remember to quit your bananas. Yeah? He said, I want you to present your body. If we went to 1 Corinthians, he talks about a bunch of stuff in there, and most of it has to do with sexual, sexual uh, uh, promiscuity, sexual uh, 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 immorality, uncleanness. You with me? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that's in First uh, Corinthians 7. He says, because don't you know your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit? I was teaching the men last night, and I was talking to them. I said, do you ma imagine how many women that, that we as, as men have, have been with and, and, and taken advantage of? And how, you know what I mean? God forgive us, you know what I mean, for what we've done in our past? I said, but every single, and this is for you ladies too. Every single man that you've ever been with, the Bible says that is your husband. And so I asked them, and I'll ask you tonight, how many husbands do you really have? How many wives do you really have? You want the calculator? I'll get my phone. I see the phone over there. Some of you don't realize it, man. You're like the, the lady with the five husbands and the Sancho on the side. You're like, gee, huchi mama. <laughs> and you don't realize if you were to search into your past, yeah. you'd have 20, 50, maybe 100 husbands. Because the Bible says when you lay with an individual, you become one. He says, so how are you going to take your temple and lie with a prostitute? Don't you know you become one with her in your spirit? Right, you with me? Yeah. So could you imagine how many husbands or wives you really do have out there? Could you imagine that, that what the Lord thinks about all the sexual immorality in, in, in Pueblo tonight? I don't, I don't have any idea what the club seems like. But I'm sure tonight there's a club or two going on right now. And there's a bunch of college kids there. Come on now. Don't act like you don't know. Huh? You just go to the colleges. You guys will go to college. I mean, I'm sure you hear all kinds of stuff. Parties tonight. This is going on. We're having a house party. Go to this club. Go to that. And, 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 and everyone's hooking up. Could you imagine God's thoughts on that? The fornication, the adultery, and the, all this stuff. That's why he said, present this body a living sacrifice. The, the, the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 5 or 6, I can't remember, but he, he said, you know, because they were the ones that said, well, I, I, I wasn't with her. Or you might say, well, I wasn't really with him. I just kind of... You know what I mean? We just kind of messed around, we kissed, we, you know, or, or in my fantasies, you know what I mean, man? Mm. Yeah. The Bible says if you thought it, you're guilty of it. And so how much eye candy out there? <laughs> Come on now, look at everybody, so quiet. <laughs> I don't mean to talk about that, but you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And ladies, you're so beautiful and awesome. Why would you let somebody take advantage of your physical body? That's, that's reserved. That's holy to God. You with me? That's holy to the Lord. Amen? What, what, you know what I mean? I was remembering uh, T.D. Jake's teaching on worship, and, and he said, he, he called this, and I don't really know, you know what I mean, nothing about it, but he said that there's something in a virgin that down there, 
hind hymen or some wall or something that when it's broken, the, vir the woman bleeds and no longer a virgin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was, it, was, it was literally that thing was taken from the word, same word as we use hymns, H-Y-M-M. -M. And what meant when you break through in worship and you're in the presence of God, how holy that is? That's what God says, that's holy right there. And when somebody is there, you with me? It's in the spirit realm, like worship unto God. That's why the Lord, He's the one that created that. But in marriage, that's why it's so sacred, it's honorable. 1 Corinthians 13 says marriage is honorable to the Lord. Yeah. And the marriage bed undefiled. You with me? But whoremongers and prostitutes, I will judge, says the Lord. That's why it's so holy that, you know what I mean? And it's like, why, you know what I mean? I understand we're human, but this is where it comes in. You got to guard your heart. You got to ask God, God, help me control myself. You with me? Because it's something that's sacred, something that's holy to God. And if some guy comes around and says like, hey, what's up, girl? You know, hey, let me Facebook you. What's your number? And pretty soon he's in your bed. God's like, what in the world are you doing? Your body's holy to me. You just married that man. And every spirit and every attitude and every anger problem and every woman he's ever been with has now just entered into your spirit. And unless you repent, you'll never be the same again. Just from one encounter. Could you imagine how many encounters them, that other churches have? That's why God said it's so holy. I beg you, I plead with you. He said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy. Holy, my wife said Sunday night. Be ye holy, for I the Lord am holy. You with me? He said, and, 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 and it's an acceptable act of worship. It's something that's not too hard for you to do, is what he said. Then he goes into verse 2. He said, we're out of verse 1. Go ahead. And be not conformed. I don't know if the NIV says it any longer. To this world, or to this culture. Amen? But I want to show you what conform means. Be not conformed. Conform means to comply. Comply with rules. You with me? Comply with rules it means um, oh, comply with rules, standards, or laws. That's what conform means. It also means to obey, follow, to keep. So no longer obey, follow, and keep the patterns of this world. It also means to be similar. To be similar. Or identical. To be in agreement with. To be in agreement with. To be obedient or com or compli or compliant to be obedient or compliant and it also means lastly to act in accordance with um, prevailing standards or customs. In the Greek, to conform, it, it, it meant, it, it came from the Greek word, um, well, no, 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 this is not it. Greek, it meant to be fashioned like, don't be fashioned like. Do not conform any longer to the patterns, to the culture, 
is what it says. And I think, I don't know if it's in the message or not, but this is pretty cool. <laughs> be not conformed or don't obey or don't be like these people out here. Even if they're Christians. How many of you know Christians that drink? How many of you know Christians that smoke? How many of you know Christians that get high? How many of you know Christians that go clubbing? How many of you know Christians that are doing things they shouldn't do with opposite sex? He said, I don't care if they, can, can, if they, if they say that they're a Christian. I don't care what church they go to. Don't follow their, their, their example. You with me? Because obviously, tonight we could say, wow, we're not going to go do what the world does. But it's funny how you get these Christian friends you got, and you're ready to conform to what they're doing. Yeah. Because they, they claim they're a Christian. The Bible tells you not to believe every spirit, but to test the spirit, try it, and see if they're people of God. Come on now. If you're trying to live a holy life and hanging around with a bunch of turkeys, you with me? And turkeys are them wannabe Christians, or sheeps and wolves in sheep's clothing. You with me? And you're hanging with them, talking to them, getting their ideas, hearing their philosophy, hearing their teachings and what they believe about what your pastor was talking about. You with me? You'll be doing exactly what they're doing. You'll be probably doing it with them. You with me? Listen, I never really had an example to look up to, you know, other than our pastors or people like that, but I've never really had, you know, I mean, anybody to, to kind of like tell me what I'm telling you. I had to learn all this stuff on my own. Everything that I ever teach you, everything that I'm telling you, we've learned on our own. And you know who our teacher was? We did have a teacher. You know who it was? It was the Spirit of the Living God. He said that anointing, that unction on the inside of you will teach you everything you need to know. Are some of you cold? Anybody? You can say yeah. Go ahead and shut that off, please, somebody. What were we saying? The Holy Spirit was our teacher. We didn't have a lot of, we kind of had, some of our churches we went to were just kind of like show up on Sunday and, 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 and hey, it's all good. We had to pu push our way in. We had to force our way in. We, we, you know what I mean? We had to make things happen. We made prayer up. Amen. Our pastors didn't even pray. <laughs> we had to make prayer up. On Sunday night before church, guess what? We, we decided, me and my friend Mitch Quintana, we decided, and our wives, we're going to come to the church and pray in a whole hour before service. I hadn't even known Pastor Ray then. Do you think Pastor Ray invented prayer? No. I mean, no, Pastor Ray just, he was taught by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You with me? But I'm sure there's people in his life that showed him, you know, hey, you need to pray, you need this. But I believe it was a, a, a desire of a pastor race to pray and seek the face of God. Nobody told us. We were having all night prayer before all night prayer was even invented. We would go, we would worship God, we would pray, we'd seek his face, we'd put some music on, we'd stay at that altar all night long. One time we were so fired up and excited, man, we didn't know what to do. We just started marching around the church seven times at three in the morning, shouting and screaming the walls down and people's lights were turning on and they're looking out the window at us because the Holy Spirit was leading us and guiding us and saying, seek my face and your face, God, will I seek, my spirit said. Hmm? And what, what, what a trip, you know what I mean, especially the Christian culture today. You hear what I preach and some of you think, man, gee, gee that's hard. No, it's real. Yeah. This is basic stuff. Yeah. 
This ain't something that's deep, brother. <laughs> this ain't something that's, you know what? It is foreign to you, but you know why? Because you've heard everybody else and you've seen the culture in Pueblo that go to church on Sunday mornings if they get an opportunity and have a chance and they're not working. Yeah. And you've never seen anybody on fire for God and you've never seen anybody say, you know what, Charlie, man, I told that job later because I ain't going to work on Sundays and miss church. That's right, right. It's heavy duty. The culture. Watch this. Remember how we did this one time? The culture meant this and I don't know where I got it from, but it said, um, the totality of socially transmitted behavior. How I many know it's socially transmitted diseases or, or sexually transmitted diseases? <laughs> so be like, Just, but I'm taking pills, Pastor. That's all right. Just keep taking them. Keep taking them. Amen. I ain't praying for you. Keep taking them. The totality of socially <laughs> transmitted behavior. You know where that comes from? You mingling with the wrong Christians. The ones that you know what I mean? You gotta be hey, you gotta be careful of the person sitting next to you. You be like, test the spirits. I don't care who it is. Test the spirits. Are they going to socially give you an STD? STB? Socially transmitted behavior? Are you going to become like they are? Are you going to become like God is? You with me? He said, don't conform any longer to the patterns of this world. You with me? Socially transmitted behavior, patterns, acts, beliefs. Amen? Um... It, it, initiations or no instructions and all other um, practices of of humans the culture characteristics of a of a uh, community or a people amen. He said, I don't want you acting like these people. Do you know that there was people in our lives that we had to get away from? Do you know that these were people and some of them were, I'm not talking about just this church, we've been saved for 30 years, but even in some of the bigger churches we had to watch who we hung around with because they will give you an STB. I mean, you don't realize that you got an STB right now. We're going to pray for you at this altar tonight and heal you. It's a rough crowd, brother. Rough crowd tonight. Huh? Socially transmitted behavior. Are you acting like your family? You're acting like the, like the, like the, like the, you know what I mean? The people that, you know what I mean? It's a trip how you, you know in your church who wants the Lord and who's on fire and you know which ones, you know, they want to sit over there and gossip and they want to sit over there and, and talk about everybody else and then talk about how everybody judges them. Come on now. You can only see it. You with me? Huh? You know who's after the heart of God and who's not. It ain't hard. You, all you got to do is open your eyes. Amen. All you got to do is watch in prayer, watch in church, watch at the altar. You know what I mean? Who, who's seeking God's face and wants Him with all their heart and wants to change. Nobody's perfect, but we're all striving for perfection. Or yeah. some of us are. Yeah. But you got to be careful. You with me? Because not everybody wants to serve the Lord. I don't even care if they're in your own church tonight. Yeah. Not everybody really wants to serve the Lord. Right. You with me? Yeah. People are here for different reasons. You with me? Yeah. Some people are here for different reasons that, are, that, are, that have nothing to do with seeking the face of God. 
But I want to be around the ones that are after God. Amen. You know why? Because you're going to make me want to serve God more. Yeah. I want to be some, around somebody that don't even want to be around God. Because they're going to bring me to their level. I don't want to go to their level. I want somebody that's going to cause me to come up to where they're at. Yeah. You're, you're not hearing me tonight. Yeah. I want to go down to their compromising, yeah. perverted yeah. level. Yeah. I want somebody that's going to challenge me in holiness yeah. and say, come up to where I'm at. Yeah. Seek the Lord with me. Let's pray. Let's read our word. Let's get in there. Let's live a holy life. You want to be around people like that. Right. You with me? You don't want to be around people like, hey, did you hear? Did you see? Did you, well, did you notice what she was wearing? Oh, gee, how short that was. But yeah. you can't even see your own self in the yeah. mirror. Yeah. That's, the, that's what trips me out. Yeah. You with me? If our eyes were on Jesus, you wouldn't be noticing what she's wearing. Yeah. You wouldn't be noticing what he, what he, you know what I mean? I wonder if he's single. Right. Yeah. Your eyes would be on the Lord. Yeah. You say, Lord, if that's your way, you know what I mean? Praise God, I'm seeking you. Yeah. When they bump in you, they say, okay, how you doing? <laughs> Man, I'm seeking the Lord, me too. I wasn't even paying attention, bumping in because my eyes are on Jesus. Yeah. See, some of you don't understand, that's the way God hooks you up. Right. Yeah. You think coming to the church or to any church where a lot of these vatos are going throughout the Pueblo, you know, the, the, the ex-homies. Uh. What's up, girl? Mmm. -hmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and you ladies fall for it. Yeah. That's what trips me out. Yeah. It's not that these idiots are walking around <laughs> trying to scheme and get in your jeans. This is some of you are playing the game. Yeah. Some of you are like, what? Oh, man, didn't you see him? He had his hands raised in worship. <laughs> oh, man, he's, he, he, you know what I mean? Right. He went to the home. He, he is, he, you know what I mean? He was, he was this, you know, this and that, but now he said he's a Christian. Okay, so let's undress. <laughs> you, know, you know what's a trip? Is I, I wanted to tell you this the other day, and I forgot. But, but I, God just reminded me of it, but it's, it's of a woman who, who, who was a pastor, single. She was uh, working in the church, she was a pastor. And she had a job delivering, uh, I don't know, something, uh, office supplies or stuff like that. And uh, you, know how, you, know, you know how it is, you kind of go here, go there, but you notice certain individuals. Don't act like you don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have a tendency, well, I want to go by this building again. Because for work, you know. <laughs> you know why you're there. Yeah. You know what's up. You know how you feel when you see him. Yeah. And she went to this certain office supply place or this business or whatever. And, and, and it was cl closing hours. And this individual happened to be there by himself. And I don't know what happened. I don't know how it happened because she just took the stuff in by the, you know, in the, in the copy room. And the door happened to shut. And before you know it, all her clothes were off. Oh my God. And they were doing <laughs> stuff they should have never done. <laughs> and it was just like, I don't know, Lord, they just, it must have been Jesus, because I thought the rapture, the clothes just came off. And they did something that they, that she regretted later. I'm sure he was proud of it. But she did something that she regrets, and uh, I'm not, I don't think they're ministering anymore. Don't you know the devil wants to burn you? Yeah. Don't you know he wants to harm you and hurt your testimony? Yeah. How does your clothes, I mean, has anybody ever had clothes just fall completely off? <laughs> Undies, everything, bra, everything. Just, whew, wow, Lord, in safe ways? You're just pushing the thing and it just came off? How many know that doesn't happen? How many know somebody had to do that?
He said in verse 1, present your body living sacrifice. Amen. Pastor Ray had a guy in his church about a few years ago that said his ministry was servicing the ladies. That was his gift. Pastor Ray told me you better take your gift to get out of my church. But he said it was his ministry. Some of us would have said, oh, really? Amen, brother. Well, it depends on what he looks like, right? <laughs> Do not be conformed any longer. In other words, these people were conforming. They were being obedient to. They were following the rules of certain individuals. And Paul told them, don't do it no more. Ain't God good? Yeah. God's merciful, even as a Christian. Yeah. You with me? Even as a Christian, I'm telling you today, majority of people have done stuff they're ashamed of. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And look back and say, God, what was I thinking? I remember somebody, I don't remember who it was, but the, 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 the thought was, how did I get here where I'm at today? Have you ever been there? Yeah. You ever been in somewhere you say, how in the world did I get here? Yeah. One brother called me one morning and he, was, he wasn't repentful, that's for sure. I don't know why he called me before church, but he was laying in bed with a woman he had just been with all night. They were kind of giggling and talking to me. Saying, hey, Pastor, I'm not going to be in church, and blah, 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 and guess what? I sinned, and she's right here, and I can hear her laughing and stuff. And I thought to myself, my God, have mercy on their souls. I would have, I mean, if you, if you do something like that, don't run to me and tell me. You know what I mean? Or call me when you're in the midst of it. Come see me Monday. If you're, if you're repentful. If you're not, then don't come. Just stay doing your sin. <coughs> but when you, turn, when, you, when you make a decision to repent and come back to the Lord, I'll be right here waiting for you. Amen. And that individual, I don't know whatever happened. I don't remember who it was. I just remember the calls. I, I mean, could you imagine calling your pastor? I mean, call anybody, you know. <laughs> I would have never done that. He said, don't conform any longer to the patterns of this world. That's what everybody's doing. But not you. Right. Or not me. Right. I don't want to do that stuff. You with me? Amen. He said, but be ye transformed. Amen. Changed. Amen. Changed. Amen. Metamorphosis. That's the Greek word for it. Metamorphos metamorphosize. Metamorphosize yeah. or something. But it means metamorphosis which is a change, right? The caterpillar, that ugly, hairy, nasty thing, crawling all gross and hairy, and gets into some a ball and begins to weave a cocoon around it. Yeah. And within, a, within, I don't know how long it took, I studied it one time, but, but a few weeks maybe, or a month or something, that thing comes out, it's a butterfly, beautiful, most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Yeah. You with me? But see, that's the salvation process. That's the transformation process right there. You come in all jacked up. Amen. And can I tell you this? There's a process in your change. Amen. We all want to be butterflies, <laughs> flying, ministering, and helping others. But the fact is, is it takes time. Yes. What, what should have taken the children of Israel 11 days to walk... Took them 40 years and they still didn't get it right. And most of them died in the wilderness. You with me? We don't want to be like that. You with me? We want to be, we, we want to be transformed. We want to be changed. The thing is, is that some of you say, well, I was saved over here. I was saved a year ago. I was saved five years ago. And you know what I mean? And, and you think in your mind that you're good. You think in your mind that you're perfect. And the thing is, your mind needs to be renewed. Because you can be sitting here tonight in church in body form. And your mind is somewhere else. Your mind is on the things of this world. Your mind is on... You know what I mean? I wonder who's hitting me up on Facebook. Yeah. 
Come on now. Right. Your mind is on other things. Your mind is on this world. Right. You're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transforms, metamorphosized, changed, basically means changed. Amen? Amen. Amen. To change something completely, to renovate. You know what renovation is? I was watching a show just before church called Fixer Uppers or something on Channel 24. And they go in and they take these nasty houses, brother. Yeah. They bought it for like 10 grand. This yeah. big old ugly, nasty looking house. I mean, that rats or squirrels and all this stuff living in it. It stunk. It was gross. But the, but the people are saying it's 10 grand, brother. See the vision. You can't see the vision. That's horrible. <laughs> but these people seen the vision. That's what I'm trying to do tonight. Amen. I'm trying to show you something that's amazing, something that's awesome. And you're like, I can't see it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you of what you could be, Amen. not what you are yes. right now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. What God wants to do in you. Because see, God sees you a uh, finished product. Yes, he does. You with me? God don't see you like you is now. Come on now. We know God hates ugly. And sometimes our hearts are real ugly. That's, it trips me out, brother. People think, man, you know, they're, man, they're so good and saved now and all this stuff. And, and, and you don't even realize, you know what I mean? Your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And you be like, I have a good heart. If God knows my heart. Yeah, God's like, pew, you stink. You're worse than Lazarus. Let me renew you. Let me restore you. Let me revive you. Let me bring you out of that, that death you're in. Because we, you know what I mean? Our minds are all jacked up. And it's not just from the drugs we did and this and that. It's from the even the way you were raised. Think of all your family members. Think of what they taught you. People that you know and love. Our, our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents, our uncles and aunties, people around our lives. Look at all this stuff. Some of them harmed you. Some of them turned you out before you were of age. Yeah. But they said, I love you. Yeah. And so what? You know, we, we grow up with this. I'm, I'm just being honest here. Yeah. We grow up with this. We become, you know, we become worldly. We get out there. We do all kinds of stuff. And then you come to church and pastor and, and Pastor Susan are telling you, you know, you're, you know what I mean? Hey, man, give it up to God. And you're like, what in the world? How do I do that? Because I've always been taught like this. Yeah. But I'm telling you tonight, they were wrong. Amen. Amen. Only God's right. Amen. My, 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 my family and them, I'll tell you what, if they did anything, they jacked me up. And it's taken a lot of years. Some of you see what you see today in me and my wife, but you don't see us 25 years ago. You with me? And all the work God has done in our lives, even till now, and I'm still, man, you know, I'm still like saying, God, I think you're jacked up. I think I'm still broken. I still need work, God. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, man, God, you know what I mean? Yeah. Come on, you know why? Because I know myself and I know I'm not done. Yeah. See, the de decep deception is, is that some of you all think you're good. Right. Some of you he here tonight, you think you're justified. You think you're good. You think you're right. You think all this stuff. And I'm telling you tonight, nah, yeah. you're so wrong tonight. Yeah. Transformation is a process. Yes, is. Transformation is something that takes. And you know how, you know how most of us learn? We don't learn through wisdom. Uh, it ain't because, you know, we're so wise. You know what wisdom is? Wisdom is learning from somebody else's mistake. Yeah, that's right. We learn from hard knocks. Yeah. That's right. School of hard knocks. You ever heard that? Yeah. We learn like the man that went out and I, I told the story and if I can remember where he went out and he, and he goes down this old, like say a Chicago street at night, you know what I mean? And he's going down the street and he falls into a hole. And man, somebody has to come eventually help him out of that hole and he takes off, goes home, and he comes the next night and he walks by, falls into the hole. And he's like, waits for somebody to come and get him. And the third night, he remembers there's a hole, but, but you know, not paying attention, falls into the hole. 
And eventually, night after night, he starts thinking, listen, don't walk down the street with a hoe. Walk on the next street. Yeah. And goes all the way around and gets to where he needs it without falling in the hole. Yeah. How many times must we fall in the hole? Right. How much times must we sin and do wrong? Right. Or, 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 are you with me? Yeah. Before we realize, hey, I shouldn't be doing this. Right. I told you not to walk in the hole. Why did you walk in the Why are you judging me? Yeah. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you, brother, don't be walking her in that block because there's a hole. Yeah. You're trying to control me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a trip, eh? Nice. I don't know who they think they are trying to tell me where to walk. I'll walk where I want to. And guess who they call a pastor? Yeah. Oh. You're in the hole again. Come here. Get out. I thought I told you. I know you told me, but I just <laughs> don't go that way no more. All right. <laughs> Pastor. Oh, dear oh, Lord. Lord. I'm in the hole. Eventually, though, eventually there's hope for you. Because yeah. eventually you're going to get it. Yeah. I don't know how many times you're going to fall in that hole, but eventually you're going to say, huh, let me walk, instead of going through 4th, let me walk through 5th Street. Because there's no holes there. Right. You with me? Yeah. And, and wisdom says, you know what, I, there's construction signs, and there's always signs, church. Yeah. There's always signs. Sometimes your pastor will be preaching, and I'll say something to you, and it's a road sign that says, Hey, right lane merging ahead. You watch it. You know what I mean? Or detour ahead or something. You're like, and you're just like, probably talking about me. <laughs> Instead of realizing it and taking heed and saying, maybe I better get in the left lane. And and because and, because Pastor was saying, and, you know, the Spirit of God spoke to me and and, and he told me, but then I, I I went in the right lane and get the thing. I wasn't paying attention. When are you going to start paying attention? You with me? Yes. Amen. We need to hear. There's warning signs. People, your children will tell you. <laughs> Somebody will tell you, my God, it'll be on a poster board. Something saying something. How many warnings have some of you gotten in your life? Yeah. How many times have you heard messages that I preach, but you didn't hear the messages that I preach? There were warnings to you. Yeah. Amen. There's a hole up ahead. Yeah. You with me? And it's like, man, you fell in that hole a million times. And we can't say it's wisdom that, 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 that took us out. The Bible says it in Proverbs, men, especially if you want wisdom, get into the book of Proverbs and read it. It'll give you wisdom. It'll give you knowledge. It'll give you understanding. He says, beware of that chick. Come on. Talks to the women too. Read it. There's women stuff in Proverbs. A wise woman builds her house up. She don't tear it down. You with me? Yeah. Amen. Oh Jesus, help us. But be transformed, amen, by the renewing of your mind. Metamorphosis. Amen. Metamorphosize like a caterpillar. Amen. Let me see. Let's read this. And be not conformed to this world or this culture, but be ye transformed, metamorphosized, by the renewing of your mind, that you may be, that you may prove. Let me get back, back to that in a sec. But do me a favor, would you turn that on just low real quick? Because I, I don't think the windows are open or nothing. How do we renew our how, how do we renew our mind? You tell me. Be renewed by the renewing, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What did you say? By praying. Reading the Word. Reading the word. Amen? Amen? Basic instructions before leaving earth. This is it right here. Amen. Being renewed, being made better than you were when you were new. You with me? How? Being transformed by the renewing of this thing up here. 
this thing up here, I'm telling you, listen, some of the ways that you've lived your life or that you're living your life, some of the ways that you do business, some of the ways that you treat others, some of the ways, it all comes from your past. You need to be renewed because yes. it's not right. Yes. Don't you understand that? Doesn't the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you convict you when you're mean? Convict yeah. you when you're wrong? If not, the Holy Spirit doesn't live in you. Yeah. Because growing up as a Christian, the Holy Spirit would convict me if I did anything wrong. Yeah. Lying or whatever, man, you better go repent. Yeah. Yeah. You go tell your boss you lied to his face. I'm like, oh, Jesus, here we go, boss. I'm sorry I lied. Why would I do that? Because I, I want the Holy Spirit in me. Amen. I want to honor Him. I want to, you with me? I want to do what He wants me to do. Because if I do, He's going to be, He's going to be even louder. He's going to let me, He's going to teach me even more stuff. Yeah. If He lives inside of you, shouldn't He convict you? Yeah. Bible says He was sent to convict the world of sin, of righteousness. That means you're going to live right. Yeah. In God's eyes, not yours. Yeah. Understand that, church. This ain't about what you vow, what I think. When does your, your thoughts matter? Yeah. Yeah. This has nothing to do with what Pastor Vince thinks. It has to do with what the Word of God says. Yeah. Well, I think that I was justified in telling my boss this and that, and you lied to him, but I think I was justified, so I'm, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. I don't have to tell anybody I'm sorry. Listen, and listen, you live like that, you won't be saved very much longer. See, remember I told you there's road signs? Yeah. There's one right there. There's a road sign for somebody that says you keep living the way you want to live, you won't be saved very much longer. That devil will take you out. That's one of those road signs. You with me? Why? Because we want to act, we want to behave, we want to live the way we want to. Well, this is the way I was raised, this is the way I was taught, this is, you know what I mean, all this, but listen, it was all wrong though. Come on, church. It was wrong the way you were taught. It was wrong the things you did, the things you were allowed to do, the things that were allowed to be done to you. It was wrong. People treated you bad. The Bible's all about treating others the way you want to be treated. That's the golden rule. Come on, church. Love one another as I have loved you. You with me? Come on. What is love? Loving? You know what I mean? Beating somebody? Uh, you know, you with me? Loving smacking my wife around and telling her, you shut up and submit and do what I said to do, because I'm the boss here. And I tell you, I wouldn't have been married in 30 years or 29 coming up. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Huh? I heard somebody yell the other day, one of the men, submit. <laughs> well, when you submit to God, your wife will submit to you. Yeah. You with me? No wonder they're single. <laughs> That's right. Come on now. Sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> Preach it. Preach it. Oh Lord God. Huh? You're supposed to love you're supposed to love people. You're supposed to be nice. Think about kindergarten. My goodness, what do you need to go to kindergarten? Be nice. Play, don't fight, don't hit, Alex. Where's your scissors, Alex? Give her her scissors. <laughs> I don't have them, I promise. Let me search you, there's the scissors, uh, lies. Come on now. And God's like, I don't like liars. You with me? Yeah. Look at some of the things God hates. Some of you, your pictures are in there. <laughs> oh, Lord. Huh? Hate what God hates, love what God loves. Amen? But I mean, if the, if the, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, Galatians 5.22 is going to function out of you. It's going to flow. Love. You love people. We love the unlovable. Amen. Come on now. Amen. That's hard to do. Amen. Huh? Loving somebody that doesn't deserve your love, that's hard to do. Right. But that's what God commands us to do. Amen. Come on now. 
You guys got to love your pastors whether we, whether we rebuke you or not. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Huh? Whether we tell you the truth or not, you're commanded by God to love your pastors. Amen. Where? Show me. It says love your enemies. <laughs> and your pastors at times are your enemies. Joy, you're commanded to be happy. Why are you going around all discouraged, depressed, and all this other, you know what I mean, yeah. compression stuff? Yeah. You're supposed to be above that stuff. Yeah. You with me? You're supposed to have greater power in you than the, than the pressure that's coming on you. Yeah. Like a pop can. Yeah. Go home and get your pop can, because I know you're going to go get a pop. And stand <laughs> on it. I promise you, put all your weight on it. So I'll be like, no, I'll crush that thing. No, no, no. So you put your whole weight on it. Buck 52, whatever, it doesn't matter. Put it on there and you'll stand on that can. Why? Because somehow they pressurized that can and put enough carbon, what do they call it? Like, whatever it is. Carbonation? Inside that can along with the liquid that, 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 that it's so powerful in there that it, 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 it how do you say it? It keeps the, it, it, whatever is pressuring it, whatever's coming against it, it the, the, there's more power in it than there is it coming against it. Man. But open that pop can and try that. Man, Man. them Jordans will have a pop all over them, all sticky. <laughs> Why? Because you let the power out, you let the pressure out. You with me? Man. That's what the joy of the Lord is. He said, don't you know that the joy of the Lord is your what? Your what? Your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Don't you remember? Maybe we haven't taught them. Huh? Peace? Well, you know what I mean? Come on now. Peace of God inside your heart, no matter what happens. Call you emergency. Say this person passed away. Call that person was in a wreck. This and that. Man, the pastor walked around in the peace of God with you. <laughs> hey, this person who come, they man, they busted him with some man. Really? Well, wait till they call. They had an affair. They're getting divorced. They're this and that. And they like, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> I'm not there walking the floors at night. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these people. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Why, the peace of God, because I know God God will touch you, man. God's going to deal with you. Yeah. He'll help you. He'll do it. You know what I mean? Yes. Patience? Oh, dear Jesus. That's yes. a different story there. Yes. But I think I do. I have. I mean, just with kids. I, I can't stand anybody under this height right here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love kids. But I just don't have a lot of patience for them like I used to. Some of you, man, you try my patience, though, man. That's heavy, but I still love you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. Huh? Amen. Kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. Amen. Self-control. Amen. These things ought to live inside of you. If the Holy Spirit is living in you, these things ought to come out of you. You with me? Remember, you know what I mean? And don't use this as an excuse, but it is a process. The Holy Spirit, if you allow Him to, if you allow Him to, He'll produce these things in your life. Because some of us, we produce 19 through 21 in Galatians chapter 5. The works of the flesh. Go look it up. See, well, what are they? Go look it up. But the Word of God is what renews our mind. To renew means to renovate or renovation. To make something new, fresh, amen, or strong again. To make new again your mind, your attitude, your thought process, amen. Your outlook on life, your beliefs, make them new. How many know your attitude determines your altitude? Yeah, yeah. Your outlook on life, your outlook on anything. Yeah. Don't you know God's going to deal with you? Yeah. Anything you do, and you have a bad attitude, you can, you can 
you can plan on staying there a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God won't let you go. Not until he deals with your attitude yeah. and the situation. Yeah. 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 You with me? Come on now. Right, Somebody say, I can't stand this church. I even hate this church already because all they do is tell me this and all they do, oh, hold on, baby. Put your seatbelt on. God's going to stick you there like glue. When will he release me? When you change your attitude. Yeah. When you get right in that mind of yours. Yeah. And then you'll realize, now they are for me again. They're on my side. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Some of you just think of it this way. Right now, your children think, as if you have teenagers or even little ones, your children think you're the, you're the worst thing in this world. They hate you. They can't stand you because you go to church, because you make them come to church. And right now, you're the enemy. Yeah. And, can I, and, I, and I can I ask you, are you doing wrong? No. Are you doing right? You're trying to teach them. You're trying to show them to God. You're trying to bring them to, to the Lord and, and to get them saved and all and help. You, I mean, a, par a good parent would do that for their kids. And but but the thing is, in their minds, and you got to be careful. This ain't in your mind that your pastors or your parents are against you, not for you. Yeah. Right. You with me? Right. A lot of people won't come to us for counsel because they know what we'll say. Yeah. Right. I'm going to tell you what we'll say is in this book right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And really, your flesh and your mind and your attitude don't want to hear what's in this book and they don't want to hear what your pastors have to say. Right. So therefore, you'll go to your, your Christian friend at work. Come on now. Yeah. Or you'll go to somebody else that's not even saved. And talk, talk to them about your situation. And then tell them, well, this is what my pastors are doing. They're telling me this and that. <gasps> They're telling you to, to just pray for them? <laughs> yeah, man, that sounds like a cult to me. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. Some of your family thinks we're in a cult because of what you say out of your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> right. People out there... All they hear is what you say bad. They don't ever hear any good. Yeah. I mean, no, that shouldn't be like that. Yeah, you with me? I know why nobody comes with you to church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make myself laugh, bro. He's heavy duty in here. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Somebody gotta make me laugh. <laughs> kind of faces, man. But God wants you better, not bitter. Yeah, God wants you happy. What's wrong with pastor wanting you to be happy? Come on now. Don't you want your children happy? Yeah. You want to see them coming in again, their head down, they were in more trouble, they were in this, they were in that, they got, you know, the, fine, they got all this stuff, and then, gee, it's like when they come, you're just like, hey, all they bring is problems. <laughs> right? As a parent, you feel like that. You with me? Don't you want to one day just see him coming in smiling and full of joy and, and, and man, guess what, Mom? I didn't get in trouble today. Amen. <laughs> I got a call, Pastor. He didn't get suspended this week. And you're happy, you're excited, you're crying. Sometimes if you see a tear in my eye, just say, He's happy for me. <laughs> but God calls us to change. Amen. You with me? Amen. I've been saved 20, going on 29 years in a month. And I've been changing this whole time. See, you're not saved. In, I wasn't saved in 1985. I'm being saved today. Amen. You with me? Right. Do you understand that? Amen. You with me? You're not saved yet. You with me? You're being saved yeah. every day. You with me? Yeah. You're being renewed. You're being changed. You're being transformed. You're being made like Jesus every day, yeah. if you let him. Yeah. Yeah. 
If you want to live according to the way you've always done it, the way you've always lived, the mindset, the attitude, the heart, and all that stuff, listen, the Bible commands us in, 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 in Psalms 51, God created me a pure heart. Renew a right spirit in me, God. Amen. God, don't, don't cast me away from your presence, and please don't take the Holy Spirit from me. I don't want the Holy Spirit to be taken from me, do you? No, you want the Holy Spirit to lift off your life, come out of you, and, and so you can go live your life the way you always did? Yep. I'm telling you, the Bible says the Holy Spirit won't always strive with man. Yeah. There will be a day He has to leave if we won't change. You with me? And I don't know about you, I want Him with me. I want Him on my side. I need Him. But you can't live the way you've always lived. Right. You with me? Stand with me tonight. You can't live the way you've always lived. You gotta change. This whole thing, listen, I don't know if it was Tim Grisham or not, but I think it was. And I'll ask him when he comes Sunday night. But one of the brothers made a track. And you know what a track is? The pamphlets that we hand out, the flyers, the Christian tracks. And on the front, it said, what you must do to go to hell. What you must do to go to hell. And we'd hand the tracks and people were like, what? What's that say? I had to go to hell. They'd open it up and it'd be blank. They'd close it, look at it, open it up again and it's blank. And then they turn it to the last page and it says, yes, that's right. You read right. To go to hell, you don't have to do anything. Nothing at all, just stay the way you are. But if you want to go to heaven, you've got to be born again, you've got to change. You've got to let God be God in your life. You can't just go to church and hear about God. You with me? God don't want to stay over here at 1010 Troy. Waves at you as you drive away, say, see you. Uh, let's see, what's today, Friday? Maybe for prayer or Sunday. <laughs> then you go, you know what I mean, down the street and the Lord's at the church. How many know God wants to go into your house? Yeah. He wants to go home with you. Yes. He wants to come and when he comes, he starts looking around like, looking at magazines and stuff. Right. He starts getting on your internet and looking up your files and stuff. Yeah. Come on now, Back. seeing who your friends are. <laughs> That's heavy duty. Yeah. Who's your friends on Facebook? He said, if you're a friend of the world, you'll be an enemy of God. Come on now. They better all be Christian on there, talking about scripture, Jesus loves you, amen. We're waiting for the rapture. Come on now. But if you see Bob Marley on there smoking a joint, Come on now, Tupac and everybody else, and 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 and, and uh, Lady Gaga, and, 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 and you know all that junk on there, and, and, and all these people hitting you up, talking about what's up, girl. <sighs> if you be a friend of the world, he said, it makes you an enemy of God. If I asked you tonight, how many of you want to be the enemy of God? I can guarantee you not one hand will go up. You with me? And I'm not just picking on Facebook. It could be anything. You with me? I want to be that. I want to be a friend of God, man. I want to be doing what God called me to do. I want to be changing. I want to be... You with me? I have to hear the same word I preach. I'm not standing up here in judgment pointing a finger at you. I hear the same word I preach. I, I hear the same word you hear. And I have to abide by the same rules you do. You with me? And if I have to abide by them and I'm the pastor of the church, I'm going to always be preaching to you. Listen, we've got to abide by the rules, church. We've got to listen. We've got to read this. We've got to change. Come on now. We can't stay the same. Amen. 